Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Dave Neal here, stand-up comic host of Bachelor at Recaps, which premiered last night, Katie Thurston's season. We've got a recap up, a fashion recap, and tons of other content. Do me a favor, if you want to watch any of that, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, leave a comment. But in the meantime, we are talking Chris Harrison. I said we're here fired with pay. Of course, uh, not exactly fired, uh, let go, severance package, Paid to be quiet. That's essentially what's going down right here. So now he speaks. Let's get into what he had to say here. This is Chris Harrison's official statement. We'll see if he says anything else. But in the meantime, this is his first statement here uh, with regards to the news that he is being paid a uh, eight-figure sum to leave the Bachelor franchise. Essentially... Uh, the Bachelor producers, who are complicit with everything that goes on in the show and very much as guilty for the boiling point that led up to the the height of the drama with regards to the poor casting choices, the poor storytelling and lack of diversity in the editing room. All of that came to a sort of uh, boiling point here with Chris Harrison uh, being interviewed by Rachel Lindsay, and which led to essentially him being paid I don't know, 50, 75, 90 million dollars. They said it was somewhere in the middle eight figure range. Chris Harrison says, I've had a truly incredible run as host of the Bachelor franchise, and now I'm excited to start a new chapter. I'm so grateful to Bachelor Nation for all of the memories we've made together. While my two decade journey is wrapping up, the friendships I've made will last a lifetime. Uh, Joel, Jojo Fletcher says, Love you, my friend. Kelly Flanagan, you will be missed, Chris. See if there's any other um, uh, verified contestants there. None so far, but we'll compile a list there of who's uh, wishing him well. You know, this is where you get to see people's true colors. Were they friends with you, Chris Harrison, or did they not want to bite the hand that feeds? And now that you're not part of the show, you know, do you realize who's going to call you? Well, I think he'll uh, maintain his friendships. Um, this is Colton, a friend of Chris Harrison's who says, great A, human being. Thank you for being a friend, a stand-up guy, and a hell of a host. Can't wait to see what you do next. Well, Colton, just set your Google alerts to Chris Harrison or put a tracking device on his car. Either way, you can follow him how you so please. Dylan Barber said, eight figures, good Lord. Yeah, no one's going to be having student loan debt after getting an eight-figure payout, that's for sure. I, I do want to push back on this. I want to I wanna push back on this. A lot of people will leave comments and they'll say, you know what? Chris, he got paid. He can handle it. Listen, it's not about Chris Harrison. I prefer the conversation that could have happened rather than silencing somebody. Essentially, the Bachelor's paying eight figures. Not to say, here's eight figures, Chris Harrison. We love you. Go fishing. Enjoy golf. They're paying him to be quiet, to not share whatever damning information he had about the show. So we have here... Um, uh, let me, geez, but the, I, I, there were no pop-ups when I clicked on this. I come back and there's a million pop-ups. Oh my gosh, the pop-ups on this channel. Look at this. Holy cow deadline. Get it together. I have pop-up blockers set up here. What are we doing? Having fronted the uh, Mike Fleiss created Bachelor and all of its lucrative ABC spinoffs since 2002, Harrison will receive a rose of his own in the form of mid-range eight, mid -range eight figure payoff and promise to keep his mouth shut. The usual platitudes are expected to be exchanged for public consumption when the agreement is made public later today, but there is certainly no romance in the air behind the scenes. Of course, this is the public's sentiment. All right, you know, wishing everyone the best, but behind the scenes, we're talking cutthroat negotiations. As they were saying, last night was Chris Harrison's event horizon. You pay me X amount now, or I walk and I'll get a book deal and I'll do a tell-all. Bachelor decided we're going to pay you. We want this to go away. And this is one of the problems that exists from this scenario. As I mentioned, Bachelor producers as complicit, if not more, than Chris Harrison and everything that was done uh, with, uh, you know, not nearly two decades without a lead of color right? Uh, lack of storylines, editing, a ca cast and crew, that was truly a representation of diversity, you know, versus their standard. Here, let me throw you a couple uh, cast members. No, this boiling point happened because not just Chris Harrison on the show, but the producers as well, and now they're paying him heftily to just right off into the sunset. So when people say, Dave, you know, he got paid, who cares? He'll be fine. It's not, that's not the argument. The argument, is, and then a lot of people will say, you know, he didn't really do much on the show. That's not the argument. It's not, uh, Taysha 
and Caitlin are going to do fantastic. They killed it last night. Anyone with half a brain cell can do the job. That's not the argument. It, we have to be very specific, very specific when we talk about the argument that's happening and what we're actually discussing here. Chris Harrison and The Bachelor had agreed that they would seek change, that they would talk about it, that they would have these difficult conversations. And then what did they do? They hired Emmanuel Lacho for the After the Final Rose. New season, we'll bring on some new people. No, no, that's not what we were talking about. What we were talking about was having the tough conversations, having Chris Harrison do long form interviews, talks with Rachel Lindsay and other members of the alumni, uh, you know, other mem diverse members of the alumni, uh, having the producers. Wouldn't it be nice to have a, a, produ a producer's round table where we discuss the problems of casting guys like Lee from Rachel Lindsay season, the problems with, you know, not having um, a storyteller uh, in, in not having diversity in the actual storytelling versus just putting a lead out front, like a trophy and saying, look, we did our part. You know, all of these problems are not going to be addressed now Chris Harrison will not talk because he was paid to be quiet it's not about the money no one reached in the, into their own pockets to make this happen you didn't pay the 80 million I didn't pay the, the 80 million bachelor they just print money they've got so much they're a cash cow so it's not like there was a big sacrifice that was made they said here you go quiet we're gonna move on with our own issues and not address them. So that's exactly what happened. And we know that because if you look over here, we've got, this, let's see the date on this. Um, Chris Harrison says he plans to be back and I want to be back. Michael Stranahan sounds off on Bachelor's host surface response to convert, co controversy. So this was three months ago, March 4th. He said he wanted to come back. He I issued several apologies. Let's see if those apologies even exist. You know, at some point he's going to have to scrub his, um, his uh, Instagram over here. My, I don't know why my computer's uh, frozen right now. Great, yeah, my computer's like, we don't want to talk about this either. So here's so here are his two apologies back to back. Let's just go over them. His first apology came, to my Bachelor Nation family, I will always own a mistake when I make one, so I'm here to extend a sincere apology. I was actually surprised he apologized because initially early on, it wasn't that big of a story. Like it kind of spiraled into a bigger story, but it was just an interview he had with, with Rachel Lindsay on Extra, and I will share with you exactly kind of what went down, and of course, tone is very important. He seemingly condemned the judge, jury, executioner attitude of those attacking her online, that being Rachel Kirk Connell. If you, <laughs> Rachel Kirk Connell is now uh, with Matt James, but at the time, you know, uh, her past had come to light and uh, Bachelor was, uh, you know, kind of pushing her, not the, pop the pop ups here, they were pushing her not to speak and they were just inflaming this fire kind of waiting for the after the final roast for her to tell her side of the story. They were like, ooh, yeah, ratings, ratings. We Not in 2021, guys. Find another way to get ratings. We don't need we don't need the ratings to be by dividing us farther than we already are. This poor girl, Rachel. So this is what Chris Harrison says, speaking on behalf of Bachelor. And again, tone was off. Rare old Rachel Lindsay, you know, kind of, you know, could have been done a million better ways. This poor girl, Rachel, who has been thrown to the lions. I don't know how you're equipped when you have never done this before to be woke enough, to be eloquent enough, to be ready to handle this. And my guess is this woman needs a little time. He said at the time, we all need to have a little grace, a little understanding, a little compassion. And then, of course, Rachel Lindsay said, where's the compassion for me and for the people who look like me? Where would I be in that party? Speaking of the antebellum party. And Chris Harrison's response was she probably didn't even realize the history and the levity behind that all. So that's where and it's important when we have these discussions to know exactly where we're off. Rachel Lindsay knows her history. She doesn't have the privilege of not knowing the history of an antebellum style party. Chris Harrison says, there's 40 million people that don't know the history and to be honest I'm one of them I had no idea Dave Neal from Rhode Island I had no idea the history of the antebellum parties you know maybe I can invoice my public school education for a refund because we were too busy learning about you know Anglo-Saxon uh, whatever the point is is our country is vastly uneducated there's ignorance everywhere and we can't pretend that doesn't exist problem being Chris Harrison talking to Rachel Lindsay, the way, the tone, the who are you to say, it just didn't come off well. And it came off, not only did it not come off well, it's, it's almost, it, it didn't come off well. And it, and it was at the worst time, you know, worst time for this conversation where racial tensions were just at an all time high. Uh, who is Rachel Lindsay? So this is what he says, who is Rachel Lindsay and who is Chris Harrison and who is whatever woke police person out there who are you to tell her to speak out he asked Lindsay I've heard this a lot of I think she should I think he should 
So he says, who the hell are you? Who are you that you demand that? And you could take that whichever way. You could take that as him, him saying to Rachel Lindsay, who are you? Who the hell are you? Or you can take it as him saying, who are you? Who are you? Who are any of us? Again, this is where the conversation spirals because it's just not clear communication. So then he responds with his uh, apology. Let me go back to it right here. And of course, saying woke police and all that, it kind of, it kind of de, de uh, it saying woke police takes away from the people that are actually saying, no, there's problems in our country. It's not just woke police. You can't just call everything woke police and cancel culture. There are problems. He said, I also apologize to my friend, Rachel Lindsay for not listening to her better on a topic. She had a firsthand understanding of and humbly thank the members of bachelor nation who have reached out to me to hold me accountable. I promise to do better. So that wasn't like any sort of intention to step aside. That's just, he said, you know what? That was on February 10th. So you you know, it's, you know, it's a, you know, your apology wasn't everything it needed to be when you issue another apology days later. So three days later, February 13th, he says, hello, everyone. I've spent the last few days listening to the pain my words have caused. And I'm deeply remorseful. My ignorance did damage to my friends, colleagues, and strangers alike. I have no one to blame but myself for what I said and the way I spoke. I set standards for myself and have not met them. I feel that with every fiber of my being now, just as I taught my children to stand up and to own their own actions. So then, so then he goes and he does a specific apology to the black community, the BIPOC community. And then he ends up by saying, from here, I can only try to evolve and be a better man. And I humble myself before all of you. I hope I will again live up to the expectations you all rightfully have for me and the expectations I have for myself. So that's where he decided to step away um, and uh, not be a part of the remainder of Matt James season. The, um, after the final rose, I'm chuckling because if we look back just days earlier, I mean, it's amazing to think that this one interview takes away. And again, I'm listening. I've been talking about this for months, but it's amazing that the previous photo is just him hanging out with some members of the bachelor crew, Matt James season, doing his things, just doing his things. And then someone posts here, he looks really racist. Good grief, people. Listen, we would have been better. Forget Chris Harrison, forget the 50 million. We would have been better if the education played out on the Bachelor's platform. They paid for that not to happen. So if you don't take anything else from this video, it's that we have been done a disservice because Bachelor could cut a check, bought and paid for. The same stuff Harvey Weinstein was doing and again, I'm not saying Chris Harrison is a victim here, but I'm saying they paid him off to be quiet just the way Harvey Weinstein paid off his victim to not talk about the crimes that he was committing, okay? So Bachelor producers get away with this one. They do. They get away with this one, and it, and it, and it costs them you know, whatever it's going to cost them. They might take a dip in the ratings, but the show's going to go on. It's, uh, it's a hit TV show. It will go on. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think, you know? But, and again, for all the people that say, don't let the door hit you on the way out, good riddance. It's like, is that the most, is that the most intelligent form of critical thinking that we can do with all of this? You know what I mean? It's a complicated situation. And rather than just pick, I'm on that guy's side, I'm on that guy's side. Let's look at it and be mad at Chris Harrison all you want. I just don't hear enough people being upset with the Bachelor producers, the empire that is there. You weren't upset with them when the Brittany Galvin situation happened. We're not upset with them when they stoked the flames and fires of racial divides and other issues and this and that. We, we just don't, we misdirect a lot of our energy. So everyone can say, oh, Chris Harrison, be well, you rich bastard, enjoy it. But it's like, forget him. The discussion's over. We can't have the discussion. They paid for us not to. Leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think. I'd love to hear from you.